Hey guys, it's your girl Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. I have here in my hot little hands CN Designer Dips Much Hyped Dip Liquids. So I have their entire starter kit here. We're gonna go through and unbox this. We're gonna test these liquids out. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this one was a bit of a roller coaster. So you're gonna wanna stay for this one. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around, we're getting into it. guys so for a small business scene designer dips does pretty well for themselves they have a pretty large following so there was definitely quite a bit of hype surrounding this launch i know the owner had said she'd been working on these for a while and testing them out and we did see quite a few of their ambassadors using them prior to the launch and talking about how much they enjoyed them so my interest was definitely peaked and that's not to mention that I'm already quite a big fan of the brand. As you know, I've done several videos on my channel with their dips and their collections because I think their collections are gorgeous. And I'm pretty sure that most of the powders, the largest powder collection I have from a single brand right now is from Seed Designer Dips. So I believe they are my largest single brand collection right now. So I went ahead and posted this on my poll if you guys are interested in this and 97% of you guys said you were interested in seeing a review on the liquids. So no brainer for me. I was already curious anyway. You guys wanted to see it. So I picked up the kit so we could give it a try. All right. So if you take a look at the Manny on my left hand, you'll see that I did these videos a little bit out of order here. So this is the Manny that I did for Southern Posh's new Coastal Collection. I love that collection, guys. If you haven't seen that video yet, you got to go check it out. I will have it linked for you in the cards. But yeah, the long nails are already gone again. I am back to my mid-length coffins, but I really did enjoy this Manny and it was sad to see it go. All right, so they did have several options for these liquids. You could pick up the liquids by themselves or you could pick up the starter kit, which is what I did. And there was a starter kit with just the base products and then there was a starter kit with an additional single color powder. Like I said, my collection is huge already, so I did not need any more powder, so I just grabbed the kit without the powder. So here is what we find inside the kit, and that's just the base kit with no additional powder added. All right, so you can see everything was wrapped up and packaged nicely. So we've got the liquids, we've got a clear powder, and then we've got several additional little products to help you complete your Manny. And then we've got an instruction card, so you know everything seems to have been packaged really with care and there is bubble wrap and everything's neatly packed in here so I'm very impressed with that so this kit did cost 44 dollars which i feel is pretty reasonable for what you're getting you're getting your three dip liquids plus a one ounce of clear powder so that seems pretty appropriate to me as far as the price goes and then you're getting a little extra tools included too so if you wanted to purchase just the liquids then i believe they are ten dollars each which again is pretty standard for small business pricing all right, so we're gonna box everything in this box. So first we're gonna take a look at the dip liquid instruction card. This is pretty thorough and I have to say they have kind of a list of each of the steps. And then if you'll notice down at the bottom, there's actually a summary of each step and in what order you're gonna do things, which I think is kind of cool because if you're somebody who's already kind of like done a few manis and you just need a few little reminders, I think that's kind of neat to have that down at the bottom like that. Nothing really stood out to me as far as being different on the instruction card. Pretty standard instructions for most dip liquid sets, I would say. All right, next we have this little kit with the tools in it. So we have a little buffer block, we have a little clear scrubby brush, and then a very small nail file, and then a little cuticle tool. Um, to be completely honest, if you just want to try the liquids, I wouldn't bother with the kit unless you really want the clear powder. So I really don't feel like there's anything super special about these. I like that they're including them in there, don't get me wrong, especially if you're a beginner. But if you're somebody who's been around for a bit and you just want to try the powders, I think you're better off just getting the liquids themselves because you probably already have something this quality or better already in your possession but still it's cool that they have this option for those who may be beginners all right so next we're going to take a look at their clear powder so this is their standard clear powder that they offer they do offer this for sale separately this is their ultra clear 2020 so you do get one ounce of that which is pretty good and since i hadn't tested it out i figured i would go ahead and get the kit that was another reason i got the kit was because i did want to test out their clear powder because i had not tried it yet and then of course we have our liquids. So I went ahead and pulled them out of their little bubble wrap packet here, but we've got steps one through three. So that's their base coat, their activator and their top coat. And I like that there's numbers on the side, just in case you're newer, it can help to have the orders written there on the bottle for you. All right, so taking a look at the liquids packaging themselves, like I said, we do have the numbers on here and then we have a label with some warnings on there. The instructions are on there. Again, that's pretty typical for small business and we have the instruction cards, so that definitely makes it easier so we don't have to go hunt down the instructions on the website. 
and then just pulling the brush out of the jar. It seems to be a pretty standard size brush. Um, the liquid appears to be more on the medium side just from first glance, but of course we will test that out once we actually brush it on. But it does have a stopper in there, which you know is nice to help get your brush cleared off so you don't have too much product on there. And you know, overall pretty nice packaging for the liquids. So while I was picking up the kit, I did go ahead and grab a sample of their new cuticle oil, which is called jojoba juice. And this one is in the scent salted caramel ganache. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, I'm a pretty loyal Scales gal, but I know some of you guys are gonna be interested in this. So I wanted to grab this up to test for you guys as well. So we'll go through that at the end of the menu and see what we think of that. All right, so I am just popping my liquids here in my Liquid Layer Studio holder, and then I've got my little instruction card that I'm gonna leave nearby just as a reminder. But like I said, I don't think I'll need it much because everything seemed pretty standard. And then I've got my clear here for later use. And then the dips that I'm gonna use with these liquids today are from their advent calendar. So I'm pretty sure now that all the advent calendar dips from the end of last year have been released to mainline now. So I believe these are already available. So these two colors are kind of magenta E in the magenta family. And I just felt like playing with these colors. I hadn't used them yet. I thought they were really pretty. So we've got ourselves pretty standard solid and a fine glitter, which I felt would be a good way to test out these liquids just to give a first impression. I don't like to do anything too complicated when I'm first trying liquids because I want the liquids to just be able to stand on their own and for me to get a feel for how they're gonna work. So I felt like this would be a pretty combo and definitely something easy to use for the first go around. So the glitter is called Let's Get Away and the solid is called Sunday Fun Day. And like I said, I believe these are currently available on their Etsy shop. Okay, so while I get set up to dip my solid, let me go and give you the claims of these liquids. So they are supposed to be moderately low odor. They are supposed to be moderate speed drying time, pretty thin consistency. They're supposed to be difficult to contaminate and easy to use. So those were the claims for these liquids. So that's kind of how I went into this expecting them to be. All right, so first things first, I did not notice any offensive odor from the base. I detected a slight scent, but it was nothing offensive, definitely nothing to worry about. I do agree that these are definitely low odor liquids. And now as far as the base goes, I'm not sure how well you can see this as I'm painting it on, but I, I know they're saying that these are thin. I would consider them to be more moderate thickness or medium thickness. I'm not saying they're thick. They're just not, I wouldn't really call these thin. I would call these more medium thickness, but that's not a bad thing. That actually can be a great thing because sometimes that means you get really great coverage in one or even two dips. So that can cut down on your amount of dipping that you need to do. All right, so apologies for being out of frame for part of this, guys. I was uh, using my long nails still at the time, so I had to lay into a liner instead of dipping into the jar. But I took this tool that they provided, which you're going to see later. I switched to my own tool because I didn't really have a lot of success with this one. But I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this here initially, but as we go along, I think you'll be able to notice it more. But as far as the drying time goes, I'm a little confused by the moderate drying time claim. And again, I do wanna say up front that this is just my experience and that that is very relative. Whether something dries slow or fast is definitely in the eye of the beholder. So I'm just telling you as far as I'm concerned that I do not consider these to be moderate drying at all. If anything, you could probably say moderate to fast, but look, I'm already touching this and this is already completely dry right after dipping. So to me, that is not a moderate drying liquid that is moderate to fast, leaning towards fast. A couple things that are worth noting there as I move on to the next finger, there are definitely some things that can influence the speed of your liquids drying. So that can depend on the warmth or lack of warmth in the room that you're working in, any kind of air or a breeze that is blowing in your direction, could be how cold your hands are or warm your hands are. There's a lot of factors that can influence dry time. And of course I am using peel base, which can also sometimes speed up the drying length. But typically, if that's the case, then as you add additional layers, then the dry time will slow down a little bit. And I did not find that to be the experience as I went on to the next layer. The speed for me stayed pretty much about the same. Basically, I got the liquid on, I dipped, it was pretty dry right away, I mean, within a few seconds. So again, that's not to say there's anything wrong with that, I, but I do think that's information that everybody should have if you're interested in these liquids, because if you're somebody who doesn't like faster drying liquids, then you may not enjoy these because you won't have as much time to clean up around your cuticles. You may not have time to do certain techniques. So, you know, again, just things to keep in mind. So I'm gonna jump off here for a little bit. I will speed some of this up, but I want you to just kind of take a look at this on your own, form your own ideas, and I will be back for the glitter.
So here we are after two layers of the solid and that is such a gorgeous color. I really feel like they nailed the color on this one. But yeah, two layers was perfect consistency. I got full coverage. I actually enjoy the fact that they weren't too thin because sometimes when the liquids are very thin then you have to take several layers to build up color. And in this case too was plenty. So no bad experiences here. Just a little bit surprised about how quickly the liquid dried given that it was supposed to be more moderate consistency. But I did not have any issues at all with applying the solid. So as per usual, I'm going to go ahead and activate my solid nails before I get into my glitter nails. And this activator, you know, it's, it's like most activators, it's pretty standard, it activates. <laughs> Basically after a few seconds, it should harden the dip powder so that it, you can um, tap it and it should make that tapping sound. So really not much variation here. Most of the time an activator is either going to be slower or quicker drying, but other than that it's probably going to do the job. So. In this case, it dried quickly, which is my preference because then I don't have to sit around waiting for it to harden. So that was good to see. And the, the odor was actually pretty low. A lot of times activator can be the most offensive odor and not the case here. This was actually pretty low odor, I, I agree. So um, no, no issues at all with the activator. All right, so now we are getting into this gorgeous magenta or fuchsia, whatever you want to call it. I call it beautiful, fine glitter, which I'm super excited to use because I have not used this one before. So. Here's where things start to get a little dicey with the liquids. Okay, so by now I've started to figure out that these are gonna be a little bit more faster drying, at least from my perspective, than what I would expect a moderate liquid to do. So I'm not speeding up the application part, but as far as getting the dip on there and trying to clean up, I'm trying to speed that up a little bit just so that I don't run into any issues there. But unfortunately, I still ran into a few issues anyway. So basically, I dipped into the glitter. I start to pat down like I normally do. And then I go grab my cleanup tool to start cleaning up around the cuticle. And because the liquid has started to dry so quickly, when I go around the edge with this cuticle tool, it starts to kind of pull up some of the glitter. Instead of just cleaning up around the cuticle, it starts to pull off some of the dip itself. So I don't think you're gonna see that quite as pronounced on this first layer, but you're going to start to see it a little bit more on the second layer. So what I did here was because I could see that it was starting to pull up some of the dip, I just cleaned off what I could and figured I would take care of the rest of my filing. So I went ahead and just moved on to the next nail. So I believe you can see it a little bit better with this nail. You can just kind of see that it starts to pick up some of the area around the cuticle and the sidewalls in chunks because I'm trying to clean it up but because it's drying so fast, I'm not just getting like little pieces of glitter, I'm getting like actual chunks off the nail. So I stopped trying to mess with it again and just rely on my hand file later to clean it up and just pat it down and move on. It's a gorgeous glitter though, I will say that. I'm definitely in love with these colors. All right, so here's where I start to hit a snag. So I am going in now with the second layer of the glitter just to make sure that I have nice, even, full coverage, which with fine glitters, I often will go ahead and do a second layer. Chunkies, it just kind of depends. But so I expected to put on a second layer and not have really any issues with that. But I have more issues with the second layer of the glitter than I do the first. All right, so I'm gonna hope that you can kind of see what's happening here, but once again, the liquid is drying very quickly and I'm trying to clean up around the cuticles and I'm losing chunks of the powder off of my nail. So and again, that's part of the reason why I switched to my other tool because I'm wondering if it's this tool that's doing it, but I have the same issues with my cuticle tool, unfortunately. But so I do what I can. I try to tap it back down and kind of get everything to really secure to the nail so that I can continue to try to clean up a little bit. But this is where the problem starts. 
So I don't know if you can kind of already see it happening, but where I am trying to clean up a bit off the cuticle area, it starts actually pulling up like the, the entire top layer here of the nail. So at this point I'm looking at this and like, I, this is not even attached to the nail. So I start just trying to see what I need to get off so I can try to fix this. And before you know it, I have pulled off the entire top layer. So at this point, so much has come off the nail that I figure it's gonna be hard to patch it up the way it is. So I just end up taking the whole entire top layer off and you can see it just peels right off like it comes off in a sheet. So this has actually never happened to me before, but I have a pretty good theory as to why this happened. Now I'm not a cosmetic chemist. I don't formulate liquids, so I couldn't 100% tell you, but I feel fairly certain that the reason for this happening is because if you look at the consistency of that glitter powder, there is very, very little clear powder in there, which is great because it means you're not sifting around trying to find the glitters, but because of that having less clear powder in here, I feel like there's less to adhere with the liquids. So, and the glitter itself is very kind of a slippery texture. So I feel like it doesn't have enough of the acrylic powder in there to help this to really tack down. But again, like I said, I'm not a chemist, so that's the only reason I can come up with. But when you consider that this did not happen with the solid powder, that's really the only thing I can come up with as to why it happened with the clear powder. So as it happened, I ended up taking that entire second layer off and I decided to go again. And I just kind of, you know, with the mindset that I'm not going to mess with it a second time because it's obviously not going to want to stick down and I'm going to have to rely on the activator to do the work for me. So at this point, I was trying to decide if I even wanted to do this video. I mean, I know I had promised you guys I wanted to do it and I could have cut this out, I guess. But, you know, I really feel like it's important for you to get the whole picture. But at the same time, I'm not in the business to try to shade anybody. And I love seeing designer devs, honestly. And like I said, I don't even think that what happened was the fault of the liquids. I believe it was the combination of the fast drying time with the lack of the clear acrylic powder in there with the glitter that causes to happen. But yeah, I mean, it sucks. I definitely don't want to be the naysayer when everybody's saying they're great. And, and I haven't had a bad experience so far. I just wanted you to see that if you are interested in purchasing them, that this could be a challenge for you, especially with these finer glitters that don't have a lot of clear acrylic powder. So yeah, as you can see on this second layer, I don't really do much cleanup at all. I pretty much just decide I'm going to put it on there, leave it on there. I will just activate. Um, I will clean up just a tiny bit with my standard cuticle tool, not the one that they included in the kit, and then I'll just activate and clean up with my hand file. So after two layers, we have really great coverage with the glitter. So I'm just brushing off and I'm ready to get into the clear. So, you know, messing with it less was definitely the solution. Um, it does mean that I have a little bit of cleanup to do around the cuticles and, and sidewall areas, but I really felt like that was something I could easily tackle with my hand files. So I'm ready to get in the clear here, but yeah, I hope that doesn't come across as shade guys. I'm not trying to throw shade at all. I love seeing designer dips and I will continue to purchase their dips and seeing the praises of them because they're fantastic. And I, I don't, I don't want to discount the positive reviews from this liquid either. I, I haven't had a bad experience with them. It's just that we had a mishap that I wasn't really expecting. And because of that, I had to kind of change my tactics a little bit. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys saw how to fix that in case that happens to you. And definitely if you're using something that is pretty heavy on the glitter and lighter on the clear powder, you may need to change up your tactic, tactics if you're going to use this liquid. So yeah, as far as the clear goes, I did my standard uh, pretty healthy layer there of the base and then a single dip in the clear. And you can see right away it starts to absorb the clear powder. So that's a good sign. It means the ratio is pretty good. And it means that the clear powder is probably going to work pretty well for me.
Okay, so as per usual, I did let the clear dry until it was dry enough that it was not really tacky anymore. That way I could brush off the excess clear without worrying about pulling up any clear that hadn't hardened enough yet. So I did not do the baggy trick this time around. It wasn't necessary because this glitter is so fine and laid so flat. Really wasn't any need for that. So instead I just brushed off the excess clear with the brush that they included and then used the activator. All right, so self-leveling worked really well and the layers were a great thickness, not too thick, not too thin. So, you know, really very little filing and buffing to do. So I'm really just gonna do a little bit of cleanup here and then we'll be back for the top coat. All right, so as per usual, dip top coat, I am just reactivating and then I did wait the two minutes and wipe off the excess with a dry wipe before going with the top coat. But uh, all the nails are gonna get activated again because that is what actually hardens the top coat. All right, so the two minutes have passed. Now I'm going in with the first layer of top coat. So I'm doing this in two to three strokes and I do wipe off the brush um, after that first layer only before putting it back in the bottle. I do feel like that's really good standard practice if you're gonna use dip top coat. That way, if there's a little bit of activator on your top coat brush there from that first layer, you get a chance to kind of wipe it off before you put it into the bottle so that you don't risk contaminating your liquids. Although I did hear that she did quite a bit of testing to where she tried to contaminate the liquids and didn't contaminate them very easily, if at all. So that's a good sign. Um, but yeah, so I'm just really quickly gonna do that first layer, wipe off the brush in between layers. And then it says you can go back in with the um, second layer and do a more detailed layer. And that's exactly what I did. So while I'm finishing up the second layer, just a couple things to note. Um, it did The first layer did dry pretty quickly, so that's good. I don't like waiting around forever for that. So pretty quickly after I applied that first layer, it started to get that wrinkly look that lets you know you can, you're can you ready for the second one. Um, and the odor was very low. A lot of times uh, people will have dip flu reaction to the top coat itself. Um, and this one was not as heavy on odor. I mean, it did have a small detectable odor, but again, nothing offensive. And as somebody who sometimes has dip flu reactions, I did not have any reaction at all to these liquids. So there were a couple times throughout the Manny that I did notice the smell. It was not strong, but I did catch a whiff of the scent, but again, no reaction. So for somebody who has sometimes encountered dip flu, that's always good. All right, so here we are after the second layer of top coat and look at that top coat. That is a shiny dip top coat. Alright guys, so now that we got our manual finished up, we are ready to go in with our cuticle oil. So we have here the sample of the Ojoba juice, which is in the scent Salted Caramel Ganache. And I feel like this is a pretty nice size sample for $4.50, so um, I'm just going to open this up for you. We'll put a little bit on. I did find this to be a bit thicker of a formula than what I typically use. I don't, again, I don't think that that's a bad thing. That really depends on your preferences. For me, I'm very active and I type on a keyboard for work, so I don't like anything that's too heavy. But if you're looking for something that is really hydrating and smells great, I would definitely say you would like this. So this is a bit more of a heavier oil, but again, very hydrating and great scent. All right guys, so let me go and wrap up my thoughts here for you and let's start with the top coat. You can see it some here, but you'll see it even better in the photos. The shine on this top coat is truly incredible. This is a fantastic dip top coat. So if you prefer to use a dip top coat rather than gel, I 100% think you would love this one. Love the shine on it. It's really impressing me. And again, low odor, so that's really good. Now, as far as the activator goes, I don't really have any comments to say about the activator. I did what it was supposed to do. And like I've told you guys before, Activate is pretty standard, so as long as it doesn't take forever to dry, then I'm happy with it, and this one didn't. So again, lower odor there, so that's very good to see. Now, as far as the base goes, I don't think this is a bad base coat. I just think that, again, although it's relative, I did not find this to be moderate drying at all. This was much more on the faster side, and I did take a look at some of the other reviews in their Facebook group after I finished this Manny, and I even saw some people saying these were slower drying, and I'm like, really though? Because I just don't see that. But like I said, I know this is relative, so what may be fast to me may not be fast to you, and that's completely up to you. But I think it's important if you're interested in purchasing these liquids that you go in with that mindset that they are a little bit on the faster drying side. As far as the mishaps go, again, I stand by the fact that it was probably the fact that there wasn't a lot of clear acrylic powder in that glitter, given the fact that I didn't have those issues with the solids. So I'm pretty sure that's why it happened. Um, I would have to test it further just to be sure of that, but I feel like that's a pretty safe assumption. So 
Again, it's just something that I want you to be aware of. If you're going to use something that is very heavy glitter with very little acrylic powder in it, you're gonna need to mess with this a little bit less, otherwise you might run into those same issues. So if you are interested in trying these liquids, I definitely don't wanna discourage you. I don't think these are bad products. I think it's important though that you go in with all the information and that you have the mindset that you may find them to be a little bit faster drying than the moderate that they claim them to be. So if you guys have tried these liquids, I would love to hear your experiences down below because I'm not discounting the fact that this could have just been operator error. I mean, I'm not new to dip powder and dip liquids, but you know, stuff happens. Sometimes, you know, things just go awry and it could just be that I didn't do something that the liquids wanted me to do. So let me know in the comments down below if you tried them and what your experiences were because I would really love to hear about it. And I apologize again, guys. I know this video ran long, but I just wanted to make sure I gave you all the information, gave you the whole big picture. So I hope you did enjoy this video and found it helpful. If you did, it would help me out so much if you would give me a thumbs up down below. And while you're there, if you have not subscribed already, I hope you consider subscribing before you go. And don't forget that notification bell. We got new content coming every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. Central. So as always, guys, thank you so, 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 so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Husband just came in the door, came home from work, and Charlie already knows he's here. He's really, really upset that I haven't let him in yet. <laughs>